the first thing said, there are no specific rules to being a furry. You don't need to wear a fursuit or own one to be a furry. You can participate in the community no matter what you wear. And then right under that, it says some rules for the convention. Now, I like this. At least six hours of sleep. That way you're not cranky as an animal. Um, at least two meals a day during the furry convention. At least one shower a day. Now, that needs to be up to two. And we know why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The humidity in them suits, some of them suits are elaborate. You know what I mean? I feel like if your genitals are not exposed to the wind, you need two showers a day. Welcome back to BS with Brian Simpson. Uh, episode 92. 91. 91. Episode 91. Uh, don't forget, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, you want advice from the advice champ, email us at bswithbrinesimpson at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 323-451-1980. Um, also, don't forget, I'm going to be in Canada for New Year's Eve at the goddamn... Uh, that's a good question. Oh, in New, New Westminster... <laughs> New Westminster, British Columbia at the House of Comedy. Um, get those tickets now while they're on sale. Also, I'm going to be at the DC Improv in late February to March. I think February 28th to March 2nd, I want to I want to say. Those tickets are now on sale. I'm also going to be at the Mic Drop in San Diego. And I'm also going to be at uh, West Nyack, New York, all in... Uh, the new year. So all those tickets are up and on sale. Just go to, you know, BrianSimpsonComedy.com or go to my socials and click on the link. What's going on, Rob? We're, we're, we're here. Is there any elephants in the room? I, sw- I haven't watched the news in like two weeks. Is something, is, uh, is did somebody, did somebody die that we would, that we would love to have died? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing good like that. I mean, George Santos is maybe, one of the big elephants in the room, him getting him getting expelled from Congress. Oh, now listen, this dude. You know, I I sent you a thing by him. Can we watch that real quick? Yeah, I got it pulled Th- up. Uh, this motherfucker. You know what I realized about George Santos? I actually love this guy. If <laughs> to me, George Santos is okay. Watch watch this. Watch this. Hey, he George Santos here. I'm so proud of you for coming out as a furry, and I just wanted to tell you that your friends and family all accept you, and they're all excited about your persona, which is uh, awesome to be a beaverpus, a beaver and a platterpus. So let me tell you, uh, they all love you, beaverpus. Don't you ever get your head down, and don't you ever, ever let anybody tell you what you can and can't be. I'm so proud that the corporate folks at Arby's gave you the go ahead to go to work in your persona. So if you could just, you know, live it up and be as perfect as you want, just keep doing you and yiff, yiff, yiff. Bye. Okay. So listen, that's hilarious. Cause, <laughs> cause if y'all don't know that man was in Congress a month ago. Right? Is he still in Congress, actually? Because the vote hasn't... No, I think he's out. Got... I think he's out. Okay, he's, he's out. out. So that dude was a congressman mm-hmm. not that long ago. And I realized, he, to me, he's a lot like Donald Trump. Like, if he didn't have any power, he would be hilarious. You know, and now that he's right. powerless and he's and he's doing cameos for money now or, or whatever, which is, man, it, it, it honestly feels like I'm living in like a Terry Pratchett novel, you know, like uh, th- this is um, this is this is peak. This is peak 2023. Like those people that thought the pandemic wasn't over. It's like all the silly shit is still happening. I think we won't know the effects of the real long-term effects of COVID for a long time, but this has got to be one of them. Just silly congressman. I don't know if we've ever had a silly congressman. I mean, he literally, he conned his way into Congress, which is, which, which, 
it it casts doubt on everything else because if you can con your way into the the federal government at the lower level, you know people doing it at the highest level. We've had somebody con their way into the presidency and con their way into, uh, you know, the House. Yeah, and he he he's not in Congress anymore because of ethics violations or whatever, right? Like, it's just like everything about this dude was like a fraud, <laughs> and and it was it became apparent from the beginning. But I mean, it got to the point where like even Republicans had to be like, we can't. <laughs> like, think about it. Where, do, like, as a group, I mean, with the Republican Congress people, where they draw the line, at, you know, I mean, it was motherfuckers accused of like dating little girls and, you know, bribery and all this stuff. But this dude just was straight up not like f- false identities, and you know, I, like I said, I don't keep up with the news, so I don't know everything that he was accused. But, but for for me, for somebody that doesn't, his name came up so often. And and it, it was seemed like weekly. You would hear about him some new scam. Like he really should be selling cars or something, used cars. I think the funniest thing that he said was initially he had claimed to be to have Jewish heritage, and oh, they they researched that and found out that was not true. And his response was. I never claimed to be Jewish. I am Catholic. Because I learned my maternal family had a Jewish background, I said I was Jew-ish. <laughs> Joe, man. Yeah, this dude, he's a he he's a he's a hustler, baby. He's a hustler. I wouldn't be surprised if, like it, the in in a month I wouldn't be shocked at all what I heard George Santos was up to. You know? I mean, to, yeah. but to go to go from Congress to Cameo is is wild. Like people, if y'all don't not familiar with Cameo, people pay to have celebrities like say stuff to them or like wish them a happy birthday or whatever. Congrats on your promotion, that kind of thing. So that's what that was. That was someone who is a very specific kind of furry. Um, not a platypus, not a beaver. But a beaver puss. And apparently the Arby's they work at was is willing to let them um you know have all the meat. Do you meats. think it's real? Uh Do you think that's real or you think somebody just paid for the cameo uh, to get him to say beaver puss? Oh yeah, someone paid him. Yeah. yeah. Cause I don't even think the furry community respects um, made up animals, you, you know. I don't think I think there's a divide in the furry community where you got to be something like you can't be a unicorn furry. I think oh, you got to be that something. That can't be true. That no, can't be it, true. no. There's got to be. I, like I'm, not sh- I'm not sure. Look, I'm sure. Like if you showed up at the furry convention dressed as a beaver puss, they wouldn't kick you out, but you sure. definitely wouldn't be respected. You know. So, but but I, I'm making a lot of assumptions here. I don't, I don't know a single out of the closet furry. I had a I had a home. I got I got one friend. Shout out to Andy. My friend Andy's a furry. Well, I had a homeboy one time that uh, him and his girl used to have tails, you know, and that's all I ever saw. They used to wear tails sometimes. Uh, but then when he stopped seeing that girl, I never saw his tail no more. So I, I, maybe that was just her. You know, like when you date a vegan girl, sometimes you eat vegan stuff. You know, maybe if you date a furry girl, she's like, babe, wouldn't it be cute if you like just put this, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what kind of influence people got on on, on, on your lives. Uh, <clears throat> Would you wear a tail for the right woman, Brian? Um, Around the house, maybe. <laughs> okay, not in public. Around the house, if it, yeah, I mean, I mean, or like, no, I just mean like if it was a sexual thing. Oh, I you see. You know, but but just but just casually, just out and about, nah, nah, making the noise. Not gonna be caught at Target with a. Absolutely not. No. Okay. No, you shouldn't date. I mean, listen, you shouldn't be in a relationship with people where you got to lose your identity. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not. It's I'm true. not a horse, and I don't feel like a horse. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And but I would be fine if she did though. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, see, it would. De- I guess it would depend on how deep it went and how long it took for me to find out. You know, we can't be like three years in living together. You know, name on the lease, and then you're like, I just can't hide it anymore. I'm a rhinoceros or whatever. You know, I was like, yeah. that's not gonna work for me. Actually, wait a minute. So does the, okay? Let me ask you this: Does the, in the furry community do the animals have to have fur? Like you can't be a rhinoceros, right? No, I think you can. I know. I know that there's something called scalies, which are like um, lizards and stuff like that. So I know that you don't have to have fur, and I know that there's like whenever you see pictures of like, fur, like there's a big furry convention here in LA every year, and I've seen people with like dragon outfits and stuff like that. On you know Twitter and Instagram and everything, so I've I've definitely seen stuff like that. I don't know how far it goes though. I don't know. If, I don't know if people invent animals. I guess I guess I would say that there's definitely mythical creatures like unicorns okay, and dragons so, and so shit though. I'm seeing conflicting arguments here. Oh, one is saying uh, the first thing said there are no specific rules to being a furry. You don't need to wear a fur suit or own one to be a furry. You can participate in the community no matter what you wear. And then right under that it says. And this is weird. Some unsaid rules of the furry fandom include don't trace art, don't pretend someone else's work is your own, don't be a drama llama, cosplay is not consent. Some fursuiters don't want to be hugged or touched while in costume. That makes sense. And uh, some and some rules for the convention. Now, I like this. At least six hours of sleep. That way you're not cranky as an animal. Um, at least two meals a day during the furry convention. At least one shower a day. Now, that needs to be up to two. And we know why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The humidity in them suits, some of them suits are elaborate. You know what I mean? I feel like if your genitals are not exposed to the wind, you need two showers a day mm-hmm. If it, it, at the furry convention. Um, don't copy someone else's fursona. Okay, I'm done. Um, fursona is the word of the day. Pew, 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 pew. Um, <clears throat> uh, 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 one quick little tech moment. Tech moment. Um, I, I, I have, I now, I pulled the trigger on a Bang & Olufsen, um, A9. I got it. I got a real good deal for it, and I was like, "I'm gonna pull it." I've I've wanted one for a long time, but they're really expensive, and and I'm I'm all about spending money for the best thing for the thing you want. You know what I mean? But it's it got to be within reason. But I caught that motherfucker on sale for like forty percent off. I think it was a mistake. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the new the new one just it just came out and they were putting the old ones on sale and i think they accidentally put the new ones on sale for a couple hours cuz when i went back mm-hmm. to check the price was up, went way up so maybe it was a mistake whatever that's another thing monopoly is bullshit isn't it Mon- growing up i don't know if y'all grew up playing monopoly um but monopoly had me convinced that the bank making an error in my favor would happen way more often that's never happened <laughs> Not one time has the bank made an error that was that was for me. But it does happen a time from time when you online shop. Like you know, Amazon, almost no matter what it is, most of these big companies, if you order one thing and they send you two, they just tell you to keep it. And I've seen I've seen yeah. it's happened to me once. I've seen people on Reddit with, with big items too, like big expensive items. Somebody, you know, um, that monitor I have, that uh, the the uh, the Samsung the fifty the fifty the fifty nine inch or fifty what is it fifty seven inch Neo G nine. Somebody got two of those, and they were just like, just keep it. Yeah, it's interesting. You wouldn't think yeah, that pan- for like a giant expensive thing. Like I understand that for small things where it's not really worth the labor to. Yeah, like, well, back, well, I think know? I think legally you don't have an obligation to return it. Mm. You know, mm. um, because a- a- Amazon, especially if Amazon send you two or something, they don't even want it. They, I, it, it happened before, and I called them. I was like, I think I got two of these by mistake, and they were like, just keep it. You know, and I went and I googled it, obviously, and it was like 
thousands of people have experienced this. Yeah, just keep it. And I don't know if there's a limit on the, I mean, obviously, you know, if they send you, if you, you know, it's not going to happen with a car or something like that. Um, I don't even say how that could happen, but like any kind of big ticket item, you know, you know, but it would be, it would suck if it was something that <laughs> you couldn't really take advantage of. Like they send you two washing machines and you're like, well, damn, sell one of them. you know, you could sell one of them. Yeah. But that would be yes. hard to sell. People would be suspicious. A brand new top of the line washing machine for free. You just want to get rid of it. Well, I would just say I, I I bought one from Amazon. They sent me two. They told me not to return it. Oh uh, yeah, see, man, I've never sold nothing. I always just get the shit away because I would rather just I rather just yeah. be rid of it. That's true. I rather just I rather just have it out of my. Uh, I'm too easily my life is too easily uh too easily cluttered. I would rather just get rid of the shit. Yeah. You know, the holidays are here. When you're sitting around the fireplace, you don't want to be sweating your balls off. Sheath underwear keeps you cool and dry down there with dual pouch design. One pouch is for your balls. The other one is for your dick. It keeps things from chafing and sweating and sticking. I uh, I personally, all my underwear are sheath. And, I mean, my balls haven't touched my leg um, unintentionally for a couple years now. Um, what, the first time I put on some sheath, I beat it was like, I'm... I'm this is all I'm doing. I'm, this is better. I'm doing this from now on. Um, uh, Sheath also has stuff for ladies. Check out their sports bralettes that are perfect for any climate. Or their bamboo boxer briefs with a super soft waistband. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code BS to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath Underwear is 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code BS. Get Sheath Underwear now an official brand partner of the UFC. Support the show, support your balls. Wait a minute, the day before, disaster. Mass refunds, developer ghosting, and scam accusations. Wow, that's oh, all in one article? This? You didn't hear about no, this? No, 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 no. It's crazy. Where to begin with the day before? The high-profile survival MMO that instead launched as a terrible broken extraction shooter. Oh, this is of gaming news. So, okay, on Monday, just four days after release where it became one of Steam's lowest scored games ever, uh, that's a dust sentence, developer Fantastic announced that the game was a financial failure and they were shutting down the entire studio. God damn. This led to both general astonishment but also instant accusations that Fantastic, whoever actually works there, this remains unclear, was taking the money and running. Having brought in millions in fast sales from the $40 release of the game on Steam, after that, things happened very quickly. The entire Fantastic website was erased, replaced only by the studio closure message. The day before's, so the the name of the game is the day before, if y'all are having trouble keeping up. The day before's YouTube channel was scrubbed completely of all videos, including the misleading trailers it's been releasing for months and years. The day before, Discord was mostly shut down, leaving only a few channels for players to scream into. The alleged Twitter account of the CEO was deleted. So, yes, that uh, looks bad. But in reality, it seems entirely likely that Fantastic will see none of this money, something they themselves said in the own, only form of online communication they haven't deleted, the company Twitter account. Um. So let me let me explain a couple of points here that I discovered in doing a little bit of research on this one. This, okay. This company, Fantastic, dropped this trailer for the day before, and it was supposed to be this MMO, and it looked like a AAA game from, you know, an indie studio. And it ended up getting shared, like, it was gorgeous looking. Ended up getting shared by NVIDIA as, like, an example of, like, look what the RTX graphics can, graphics card can do mm. right and so people got super excited for this game and they really didn't have the ability to produce the game that they had promised so they put it on they release it on steam and they built out just enough of the game that you played through the two hour window on steam that oh, uh, gives you a refund of right a bitch yeah yeah so so their their plan was apparently, or allegedly, to just build out the first two hours so that people couldn't get refunds. Unfortunately for them, 
steam to prevent this actually holds on to the money for like 30 days to make sure something like this doesn't happen. So they end up, they're going to get no money out of this. Ah, so these no dumb, money. these dumb, that's what you get, yeah. you scamming ass dumb bitch. <laughs> Bro, because I think the window should be, I think Steam needs to change that policy for longer than that. Like certain games, like perfect, like Starfield's a perfect example. You yeah. you don't even you can you don't even get into the game for like forty five minutes, or some games right. launch and they got all kind of problems, but the whole or they put you in some fucking cute, um, you know that's an hour long, and before you, by the time you even start the game, the two hours is gone, and the, because the yeah. big studios they do this too, they have all these they always have launch issues because after you know after a couple hours you can't return the game. And and um, I, I I've been fucked plenty of times from this team, you know. And then you got to deal with a person. That's a nightmare that you you're basically, <laughs> you know, messaging back and forth with. You don't get to talk to anybody. But it's like some some genres of games need more than two hours. You know, it's like it's like if a game is fifty hours, you know, fifty hours like a fifty hour RPG. I can I should be able to play for three hours before I. But I don't want this shit. Or it might take me. It might take me a day to encounter some game breaking bug or something like that, you know? Right. Cause 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 I feel like Steam doesn't put enough pressure on developers to not fuck people. These these people didn't get away with it, but a lot of them do. A lot of them get away with fuck people because of Steam's return policy. That's why if I can, I purchase games on on a GOG. You know. Mm. Yeah, um, the Steam Steam made an exception in this case because it was such a big such a big story and such a flagrant example of scamming gamers. So so people were able to get a refund even if they had played more than two hours of the game. But that's this is an exceptional circumstance. Like, uh, people still get screwed over all the time with sort of all, scammy games that... All the fucking time. Um, and, 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 and listen, speaking of which, man, y'all see me on here singing the praises... Of the of Diablo Four, I've been just a huge Diablo. I ever just I I never forget the Diablo Two the way it felt when I played them. I was addicted to this fucking game, and and that but that's the Blizzard way. They swoop in, they got you on nostalgia. Now maybe things will change now that Microsoft owns owns Activision. Um, um, they already feel less scummy, you know. Not that Microsoft is. Uh, is a saint or anything like that, but they they definitely have different interests than Activision. Like their their interest isn't just to fuck you over by selling you a game, and you know. So my point is, maybe that'll ch- their reputation. Will ch- Blizzard's reputation is all the way in the toilet, as far as I'm concerned. And then, and Diablo Four could have been that saving grace, but you know they came out and did Blizzard things. You know, I don't understand what executives think they can release a game that's fucked up, you know, lose 99% of their player base and then make the game good once they've made all the money off you. But it's what a lot of studios keep doing. Some of them don't bother, but a lot of them, you know. But then, but it's like, you know, but I was playing Diablo 4, I was struggling through it, I was like, this is, it's still cool, it's still a good game underneath all of the bullshit choices that they've made, you know, so I'm going to put then, then, this past week or two, Path of Exile trailers came out. Path of Exile 2, which is a free-to-play version of a Diablo-type game type shit. And it makes Diablo look like they planned with you. Like, Path of Exile 2 made me realize that Diablo it is bullshit. Because Path of Exile 2 is a, from an indie studio, or at least they kind of started out that way. And they just made a good game like a long time ago, the original Path of Exile, and it was real good. Um, and I stopped playing it for a while because it, it got confusing and the seasons and all that shit kind of just kind of got away from me. Um, you know, and Path of Exile 2, I think, had five classes or six classes you could play with. Uh, Diablo 4 has six classes, right? Path of Exile 2, I think, is launching with 12. The graphics are better. The animations are better. The gameplay looks better. Um, 
They, and they don't, and it's free. They 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 uh they make all their money off cosmetic transactions or like uh quality of life yeah. things like you can buy extra stash space and shit like that. But they don't charge for the actual game. Um and it's it it literally it makes Diablo two I mean it makes Diablo four look like child's play, like it's still a in beta or something. Um and yeah, they really got to step it up. They keep coming up with these seasons with more. Co- hey, hey, just fix the game. Introduce more classes. That's what people want, you know. And they keep being like, "Oh, now you a vampire?" It's like, hey, man. They keep changing up the theme of the game. They lost me a long time ago. And tre- and Rob, you know me. I'm a fucking little piggy. I'm a whale. If I like a game, yep. I will. I will pour. I will pour so much money into a game that I really like. I'll buy the <laughs> cosmetics. I'll buy. The, I might. I, you know, they, they. I might be on some list or something up at Blizzard. How much money I've given Blizzard over the years? You know. Yeah, I really have. So I it's mean, like all you got to. You're, you're who they make the games for. I they really make am. The games for the whales. Yeah, I really am. I mean, I might have gave Diablo Immortal. Boy, I was so hyped for that game. It's so crazy that they would. Oh man, I don't even want to talk about it no more. Because, because the, 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 you know, this is the. Hmm. Let me just say, they lucky. They lucky. They lucky. I'm not Batman. <laughs> now, oh, I, now this did rise to my attention. Texas woman who challenged abortion ban leaves state for procedure. So this this woman, I, um, I forget her name. I guess that is important. Um, Kate Cox. Them, and it, they don't say her name. Okay, Katie Cox. Kate Cox, a 31 year old mother of two, had spent nearly a week seeking court permission in Texas to end her pregnancy. So she had some kind of her upcoming baby had some sort of uh, chromosome thing, something 18, right? Um, trisomy. Trisomy. Or trisomy. Trisomy 18. Yeah. yeah, which basically means like the baby is probably not going to survive. The baby's definitely not going to survive. The baby's not. The baby's definitely not going to survive outside of the womb if it even makes it that far. And her even even trying to give birth to this baby puts her in danger. She got a court a court. So in, okay, I, 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 so for those of y'all that don't live in Texas, the great state of Texas. Um. They are obsessed with women's vaginas. And that's the big knock to me down here. The, the one, the education system and the goddamn, the fact that like, so it is illegal to not only get an abortion in Texas, it's also illegal to help someone get an abortion in Texas. It's also illegal to leave Texas and get to get an abortion. Right? Yeah. This woman got a court exception for this reason because her life's in danger and the baby's dead. For all intents and purposes, the baby's going to die. Um, and she got it granted. And then the uh, then the attorney general of Texas petitioned the Supreme Court of Texas to stay that order, meaning they didn't overturn it, but they but it it doesn't go into effect until they can look into it further. Meanwhile, this lady has a, has a ticking the clock's ticking for this lady. They don't have time for some old fucks to understand reproductive shit. You know what I mean? It's like she, they don't have time because this that was two days ago, three days ago. You know, she didn't have days and days and days to, to be waiting on them. So for them to stay the order until they figured out whether she could have an abortion that was going to save her life is is crazy. And for the attorney general to personally get the Supreme Court to overrule, that's why this dude... You know, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this guy or what why he's so upset. Like, because that seems like a reasonable thing to allow, but he doesn't want any exceptions. I, you know, because the fucked up thing is it can't happen to him. It's it's but but karma's a bit. It's gonna happen to some woman in his family, some woman he cares about. It's gonna and it's gonna keep happening to more and more women in Texas until shit gonna come to a head. Shit gonna come to a head. So. It's crazy because this is like the perfect test case for what everybody says is like, oh, there's exceptions to the abortion ban. 
It's like this is well, kind it, of the perfect exception, and they're well, still not letting her take advantage of it. Well, it says here, Texas abortion ban makes narrow exceptions when the life of the mother is in danger, but not for fetal anomalies. So what danger are they talking about? Like if the baby's born with a knife? What do you mean? <laughs> Texas abortion ban makes no exception. Okay. Republican Attorney General Ken Paxson argued that Cox had not shown that any of the complications of her pregnancy rose to the level of threatening her life. Her health is on the line. She's been in and out of the emergency room, and she couldn't wait any longer, said Nancy Northrup, president and CEO of the Center for Reproductive Rights. Um, yeah, and I think that. Okay, so he says, no one disputes that Mrs. Cox's pregnancy has been extremely complicated. Any parents would be devastated to learn of their unborn child's trisomy 18 diagnosis, the court wrote. Some difficulties in pregnancy, however, even serious ones, do not pose the heightened risks to the mother the exception encompasses. Cox, who lives in the Dallas area, was believed to be the first woman in the U.S. to ask a court for permission for an abortion since Roe v. Wade was overturned last year. Her lawsuit quickly became a high-profile test of bans in Texas and a dozen other GOP-controlled states where abortion is prohibited at nearly all stages of pregnancy. Days after Cox filed her lawsuit, a pregnant woman in Kentucky also asked the court to allow an abortion. There has been no ruling yet in that case. In Texas, Paxton mounted an aggressive defense to try to prevent Cox from having an abortion. He sent three Houston hospitals letters warning of legal consequences, both criminal and civil, if they allow Cox's physician to provide the procedure. He also argued that Cox had not demonstrated that her life was at imminent risk, including noting that she was sent home after her multiple visit to emergency rooms. Cox had cesarean surgeries during her first two pregnancies. Her lawsuit argued that inducing labor would carry a risk of uterine rupture because of her prior C-sections and that another one at full term would would endanger her ability to carry another child. But Paxton contended those arguments still fell short. Because he's a he's an OBGYN, everyone. Rather, the only question is whether Miss Cox's condition meets the exception, regardless of how long the child is expected to live. Paxton's office, t- man, this is going. This is going. See, I think you know if I'm a if I'm a Republican strategist, this is bad. This is a bad strategy because you're. If you would have just let this slide. Because it's re it's it's reasonable. Like I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, even if I'm thinking like these people, where I'm like, I want abortion ban, with exceptions. This seems like something you should allow to be an exception because it because you taking this hard stance out of ignorance, it you're just gonna make. Because what's gonna happen is eventually one of these women is gonna die. You know what I mean? Because not everybody can afford to go to leave the state to go get an abortion. So eventually one of these women is gonna die, and that is going to be the end of your little ban and abortion fantasy. Like, especially if it's a pretty white girl. Mm-hmm. That's what it's got. It can't be, can be a Mexican woman. It can't be a black woman. But if a white girl dies f- because of this, that's going to be the beginning of the, the larger movement. You know? And leaves behind two children. She already has two children. So you're taking, right. you're killing the mother yep. or threatening the life of the mother of these w- kids that already exist. Now, apparently, there is also a bounty program. So, who, so you can make a citizen's arrest of any because she left the state to get her abortion. So now, anyone that helped her can also be sued by any citizen of Texas. Ten thousand dollar bounty. That's not going to backfire. That's going to backfire, everybody. Because also, don't forget, everybody got guns. Yeah, you're not thinking this through, Mr. Paxton. I don't know. And Wait a minute. Didn't he just get, isn't he in trouble for something? He is. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. But I don't know, man. I just don't care that much about other people's kids. I don't understand how you could be obsessed with like a, Somebody's fucking fetuses. I, I just I don't understand. I feel like it's more important things to do than than <laughs> it's more important things to do than, than to make sure people people uh deliver uh deformed babies. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, the previous thing that Paxson was in trouble for was uh, false claims that Biden overthrew Trump in the twenty twenty election. Uh okay. And refusing. Okay, well, I guess that's not, but that's not really in trouble. That's. I thought he'd actually done something like illegal. 
Uh, well, is that a, is that illegal? Yeah, that, yeah, that is illegal. You can't you can't make uh, as a I don't know exactly which law it is that he broke, but you can't as a public official because as an attorney general of Texas, he has um, certain duties when it comes to elections. So you can't you can't say that an election was rigged or overthrown or et cetera. Um, but I don't mm. I don't know exactly the wording of the law that he broke in that case. Yeah. But guys, the food is great out here. <laughs> the food is Good great. Good barbecue. Yeah, great brisket. Um, low key, smoke the smoked turkey. If you see that anywhere, that's bussing. Um, the speed limits are high. I like that. The speed limits are high. The roads are not very well taken care of, but but the interstates are are, are fine. You know, you can go Light eighty. Holes, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, a lot of toes, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that. You Perfect. just get your little toe pass. Here's the thing. You don't have to get a toe pass. But if you don't get a toll pass, the toll is doubled. <laughs> it's double. Yeah. And it's not exactly clear how much each toll is going to cost because it's four or five different companies. Um, and so, you know, you, you know, I've gotten random toll bills because they'll just send you a bill from your license plate. Um, and, and it'll have a list of like all the places that you were. I, it don't make sense to me. I just pay it. But yeah. And sometimes they're, they're, they're not that long. Uh, they're like, a, you know, some of them are like a quarter mile long, but you, but it's like $8. But you can go 80. Um, as long as you're not in a hurry, like you're not going speed. For a quarter mile. Yeah, yeah. You can speed is what I'm saying. Because here's the other thing. About, this is what I'm learning about Texas. It's like, because I've lived here for almost a year, but I, I, I've only been driving here for like a couple months. And this is something I'm learning is that everyone speeds. Nobody goes to speed limit. The only time people slow down is if, well, obviously there's always a random fucking piece of shit that's going below the speed limit, which they don't get pulled over enough, but that's neither here nor there. But the only time I see people slow down is when there's a cop or a construction thing. Because like out here, you have to slow down when you're going by construction or whatever. It's like, or if a cop has somebody pulled over, like you got to go below the speed limit. You can't go by at going 80. So, you know, which makes sense for safety purposes. Even though I, it doesn't really make that much sense. I mean, I guess theoretically, I mean, technically, you know, hitting a cop or a suspect going 60 would be less damaging than hitting them going 70. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. A lot of the rules out here don't make since if you think about them too much because that's you know that's what texas is texas is this great place if you don't think about it too much <laughs> it's the best place i've ever lived when i don't think about it that much you know what i mean which i guess you could say about a lot of places but texas is the it it it, 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 it i've just read this it's becoming the most valuable state in, in the, apparently texas brings in a lot of money um so it's becoming one of the most valuable states in the country. I think it's the. I think it is the most valuable state in the country. Uh, most valuable in what way? That's just but hey, in, again, Rob. This is this is what we're seeing <laughs> on Texas posters, and you're not supposed to be scratching beneath the surface. Texas is the most valuable <laughs> state in America. What the, what about that? Don't you understand? Look how it's shaped. <laughs> is Texas, there more? Is there? Don't think about it too much. Yeah, is there a more expensive? Shape, yeah. Just don't think about it too much. It's like just close your eyes and let it happen. That's Texas. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like having sex with somebody you're not attracted to, so you can like survive. If that person was a state, that's what Texas. Is. No, no. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, if they could just get the, because because you know what's weird to me too is the the place that's like all about freedom. It sure is a lot of freedoms you don't have. You definitely can't do drugs here. It's true. That's a weird thing to me. It seems like the freedom to get high would be a Republican thing, a conservative thing. Freedom, 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 but not that freedom. They draw the line with the shit you put in your body. You're free to have anything you want on your body. You can have a swastika on your forehead. Um, unless it gets you high, 
or it causes your baby to stop developing. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing uh, is that if you have enough money in Texas, then you get all those rights back, right? If you have money, you can get an abortion. If you have money, you can get high. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, bro. That's coming. That's another thing that that's going to happen, too. I, whichever thing happens first, I wonder. But one of these rich old fucks that voted for this to happen, they daughter is going to get pregnant somehow. And it's going to come out that they got her an abortion. That's a fact. Because that's the sort of thing that, you know, you can't really get. I mean, I guess you could have like a secret back backwoods abortion or whatever. Yeah. But those ain't really out there like that. And and the thing is, it's just hard to keep that type of shit a secret because so many people have to be involved. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because all the people that all the people that could give an abortion are on the other side. You know what I mean? And even and, and so it's like it's like it's not like some conservative abortion providers out there. That's going to secretly sneak you in, sneak in the senator's daughter. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know about that. I feel I, I feel like I feel like because you don't really have to have some insane level of training. There's plenty of conservative OBGYNs that would perform an abortion, even if they're against abortion, would perform one because it's, you know, for a better for a bigger purpose. Right. It's you like, oh, so? we can't. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Like you think it, there's it, cons- it, you think there's conservative OBGYNs that would do a secret abortion. Well, what I'm thinking about is like for instance, you know, I have relatives who are evangelical Christians and they're hardcore anti-abortion, right? And they voted for Trump. And if you were to have evidence that which I'm sure it exists out there that like Trump paid for an abortion, that wouldn't change their vote because they don't ultimately right, care but, that Trump had it, yeah, paid for an abortion. That's a hop, skip, and a jump going from performing an abortion. Well, sure, but I'm just saying that I, I don't think people really care about hypocrisy on their own side is what I'm getting at. So I think that I think that there's, there's plenty of people who want oh, yeah, to outlaw yeah, yeah. drugs no. but do drugs themselves. No, no, I'm not you saying know? that their base... Like a senator's daughter has an abortion that for like these reasons, right? Yeah, that yeah. that their base is gonna turn on them. But I'm saying that's gonna start a legal battle where it's like, oh you, you know, you're making rules, I ideological rules that you're not following. You know? Because right. before that, it, before that is just ideology, and you could be as much of a hypocrite. I mean, I think they're all hypocrites. You can be as much of a hypocrite yeah. as you want. You know, like it's not illegal for you to. I mean, you can be homophobic and also be secretly gay. You can be a homophobic yeah. Republican senator and be gay. You know, but it, but to, but to pass a to 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 pass a bill that's like gay shit is punishable by death. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then they catch you doing some gay shit. That's different. Right, that's gonna start a legal thing because you, you you're not gonna kill yourself. True. It's True. like it's like you if you if you're a senator and you helped your daughter get an abortion, aren't you guilty of the same statute that you you know you know what I mean? That's what's gonna start. That's gonna be a whole legal fucking mess. Well, but that's why you got to keep it. That's why you got to keep it secret. You know, I but mean, you, like but that, even, well, that's what I'm saying. You, if, yeah, you yeah. can't keep it a secret. You couldn't keep that a secret. I think that would be real. It would be very difficult. It would be very difficult for you to. Uh, it would be very, very difficult for you to keep the, keep that under wraps. Yeah, yeah, because you don't know the political nope. leanings of these nurses and these. I mean, you would have to send you would have to you have to send your daughter out of state, send her. You know, have her do it under a false name. Yeah, because I, I th- and I think this is going to end up going to the federal Supreme Court, where I think. They will strike down this law, maybe, or at least, um, no, like, no fucking way. Mark p- parts of it unconstitutional. That's the thing too, they man. Might. All these old ass people that can't even get pregnant is making these rules. These Supreme Court justices <laughs> are making these rules. 
Yeah, but you know what? Every now and then the Supreme Court will surprise you, won't they? That's true. It's true. Every once yeah. in a while. Every once in a while you're like, wait a minute. You know, I guess somebody forgot to pay for your trip. Um, all right. <laughs> George Santos slams same-sex marriage after own anniversary. Is this the same George Santos we were just talking about? It's the same, it's the same George Santos. He's, after his own gay a, marriage anniversary? Yes, sir. <sighs> wow, this guy just keeps on giving. Okay, I, maybe I don't like him so much. This is from Pink News. <laughs> George Santos criticized the same-sex marriage days after anniversary of his own same-sex wedding. Well, c- come on, guys. And look, at this point, jo- George Santos, this is this is performative art. <laughs> he, he's he he is such a ridiculous person. It it, it, it has to be on purpose. It's, he's like a character that somebody wrote. Because if he came out as a as a as like this is like performative art, he would be one of the greatest comedians of all time. To have duped Congress and just to show the system being unserious. Um, the first not he says, wait a minute. Santos has criticized Simpson's marriage on the anniversary of his own wedding, saying it should have been a civil union. Wow, guy. Um, I never understood the 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 is because isn't that a distinction without a name? I mean, distinction without a difference, right? Uh, right. What did I say? Man, I need some sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I never understood the what, what was the what's the point of the of that semantic argument of like, oh, it should be a civil union and not a marriage, or that's yeah, separate but equal. It's the same argument. You know, it's like have two different institutions for people so that straight relationships can maintain their place in the hierarchy. They're sort of exceptional status. Yeah. Socially. I mean, honestly, man, I feel like the LGBTQ community, I feel like wasted a lot of cachet going after marriage. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because I feel like that's, huh? Well, I just feel like marriage of all things is like the least, I mean, of all the things, <laughs> of like, like if you, if you as a community could fight for one right, why would marriage be it? You know what I mean? I, I feel like, because that's the, that's the thing that they won. They got that. Yeah, but it's like yeah. you put all your you put all your resources for that, and it feels like a thing that like it's going away. Like less and less people are being married. Like it's out kind of outdated now. You know, it's still so embedded in American law and society. You know, and there are so many. I don't want to say benefits because I mean there are benefits to it, but it's also just like the way that hospitals work, the way that bank loans work, all these different things, the way that buying property works, all of these things take uh, marriage into account as a sort of fundamental building block. When somebody dies, like the way that the will is interpreted is based off of whether they're married or not, who are they married to, how long they've been married, yada, yada, yada. So like, mm. so it, it's, it's, it's such a functional part of American society um, because it's, one of it's been around since the country's founding, so I can understand why they would go for that. It's also it's like it's so hard to argue against gay marriage, you know. So when people would argue against it, it just really highlighted how thin their basis for for opposing it was. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I mean, the thing is, we probably couldn't like same sex marriage could not even happen now. No. No, the right would lose their minds and the left would be arguing about whether same sex is excluding (laughs) fucking other gender. You know what I mean? It would be a whole fucking thing. They they would add all these unnecessary things to the acronym. It's actually same sex, differently gendered, you know, supreme super union making or some shit. Um, what's the what's the what's the voicemail? The voicemail is pretty good. I like that one. It's a guy in the military. Uh, here I'll play it. Hey guys, um, I'm calling just to 
give you guys a little a little a little mini story about revenge. Um, real quick, I used to be in the military a long time ago on a ship. We found a guy stealing things from their shipmates, um, including me. One day I noticed that I had a whole encyclopedia of CDs. Uh, this is back in like the early 2000s, right? So, you know, this is back when we kept those libraries of CDs, right? So I had a big old library. I had it in my, in my locker. One day I came, you know, came off of duty, went to my locker. My lock, my lock was busted. My stuff was gone. Everybody kind of knew who it was, but, you know, we had told the MAs, the Master at Arms, um, and they, you know, every time they investigated, they couldn't find any of the goods, so they never prosecuted him or whatever. So I had to come up with something right. Now, this guy was, like, three times my size. My first instinct was to fight him, but I'm going to get my ass what I know this. And the only way I could win a fight is to cause extreme bodily harm, which in the military is not a very good idea. So I uh, came up, I concocted a, a solution. My man was also a bookie. He used to take bets on the ship. So he would take bets, and most of the bets, he was so dumb that he couldn't keep his numbers right, so he would write everything down on a laptop. So uh, the night before we were scheduled to come back into port off a nine-month deployment, I made sure I was in the birthing when he wasn't around, went into his locker, busted in there, took the laptop, and hit it you know, somewhere on the ship, and overnight, I took the laptop, went out to the to the side of the ship, and threw that shit into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the next day, my man was freaking out. He's like, somebody stole from me, whatever. They called the MAs to come in and investigate. They couldn't find anything. Nobody knew what happened. Um, then, once we got back into port, everybody that he owed money to, and he had to exchange money because he's doing the, the numbers, he couldn't, he didn't remember him because they had all the information on the laptop. So people started looking for him. And long story short, a couple months later, he went AWOL, disappeared. People said that he, he owed people money. He didn't know how much. Um, and that was my particular, like, I felt real good after hearing that. Not going to lie. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I kind of wanted to share my story. All right. Love the podcast. Keep it going. Holla. Bravo. Bravo, sir. I like that. I like that. Decent story. Could cut a little bit of the fat, but uh, but it gave me what I needed. A little boost right there. You made there. a plan, and he executed it. Yeah. You made a plan. You executed it. You got away with it. Um, and that, uh, that, that, that satisfies a lot of our tenets for perfect revenge. It's not a perfect revenge because he didn't know it was you. Um, but. But I like that you threw the laptop in the, in the thing. I like that he owed all of these people money. Um, I love how you got away with it. You didn't get caught. Um, I would still like to know where the fuck he was hiding all the stuff he was stealing from people. Um, um, but yeah, that's a good that's a good revenge. Doesn't have a lot of meaty satisfaction to it, but yeah, I like the fact that it affected him in a negative manner. Um, and going AWOL is is that's the worst thing you can possibly do. Remember, guys, the fastest way out of the military is to do your time and get the fuck out. <laughs> I uh, I want to highlight one aspect of that story that I think is really important. I want your feedback on it. What do you think about the fact that he effectively is able to get other people to make the th- he can't he can't attack this guy right? So he steals the laptop with all the numbers on it, so that this guy is in danger from other people. He keeps his hands clean. Yeah, that was one. That was awesome. Yeah, that was one. I feel like that. that I feel wonderful. like that gives you bonus points in a revenge story or in a re, in a revenge plan if you can oh, get yeah. somebody else to effectively do your dirty work. Yeah, the key. The, the, yeah, the, because the key thing is to get away with it. You yeah. know, it's like if you don't get away with it, it's not really revenge. You know, it's something mm-hmm. else. Yeah, um, it's not really. You know, it's not really comeuppance. Unless mm-hmm. you get away with it. So, yeah, the fact that he was able to set it up, got away, hands clean, like a real G. I mean, how the fuck you got a hold of that laptop? Because I, I, I don't know. I, did, I never served on a ship. So I don't know 
you know, why you couldn't throw overboard immediately. Um, you know, I didn't know where you were going with that. I thought maybe you was going to, you know, copy the files and send them to the, because, you know, because running a bookkeeping operation is uh, illegal <laughs> on the sh- on the Navy <laughs> show. So I thought maybe you was going to send it to the AG. Or so, I don't know what was going to happen. But, yeah, I think you did the smart thing. Because, again, this way you're not involved. Your name isn't. Your name isn't in, in the in the mix, you know. He might have suspected you, though. I would love to know. Did he suspect you? Uh, you wouldn't know he disappeared. Yeah, the fact that he disappeared, though. But wait a minute. But now you're saying it on here. This is a very, very, very popular podcast. He might see this and know that it was. No, I'm just kidding. He probably won't know. Uh, but he might. He might find out that it was you. But what are you going to do? He don't know where you live. He didn't. This guy didn't give his name. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, you know. I mean, if that happened to me and I heard this story on the podcast, I would know that I would know who it was. Oh, you'd be able to recognize the voice. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I know whose CDs I stole. <laughs> like, so, oh, man, but that would be the perfect thing. So maybe, oh, maybe, maybe talking about it on the podcast is the full circle part of his revenge. Like he wants that motherfucker sitting, he's sitting somewhere in the. You know, he's somewhere in, in uh, you know, in, you know, in Croatia. Guatemala or something. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, uh, he can't come back to America. They'll arrest him. He went AWOL, right? So it's like he's probably somewhere down in Guatemala listening to BS with Brian Simpson because, you know, it's big down there. He's sitting there, son of a bitch. <laughs> it was Johnson. Yeah, that maybe. So, okay. So maybe you did. Maybe you did check all the boxes. Who knows? Okay. Um, we need one, a ranking system. We need a ranking system, Brian, for revenge stories. Yeah, some of them be trash. Some of them be garbage. Um, I think I got to do one more article. How about that? Actually, no, let's do one more email. The anti-capitalist struggle in identity politics, that feels like it's going to be long. Yeah, it's real long. That's, that's okay. a long one, so I, I wouldn't do that's, that one. Yeah, British accent. Okay, here we go. What's up, OG? Episode 89, about the 12-minute mark when you start getting into the British and their accent. The evolution of the posh accent in England is a complex interplay of historical, social, and linguistic factors. Initially, the posh accent associated with the upper class emerged during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. This period marked significant social and economic changes, including the Industrial Revolution, which led to the rise of an affluent bourgeoisie. The posh accent became a marker of social status, distinguishing the upper class from the lower classes. The British aristocracy played a critical role in shaping and maintaining this accent as a symbol of prestige. The influence of elite schools such as Eton and Harrow also contributed to its development. What the fuck are those? On the other hand, American English diverged from its British roots over time due to various factors, including isolation, regional influences, and the impact of immigration. As the United States developed its own identity, linguistic distinctions emerged. The American accent represents a snapshot of English as it sounded during the colonial period with unique regional variations and influences from diverse immigrant communities. Wait a minute. I thought that there was a specific American that made a concerted effort to separate American English from English English. Um, In summary, the posh accent in England evolved as a marker of social status during a period of significant societal changes, while American English reflects its historical roots with regional variations and influences from diverse immigrant communities. Well, yes, that's why I always say, I feel like America speaks English better than than the English people do. (laughs) Um, And so maybe there's something to what you're saying, but but honestly... I mean, I think maybe initially when the initial colonies happened, the the root of American English is a snapshot of what British English was at the time. But I but I'm I'm pretty sure that there was that there was a concerted effort for American English to be distinct, like going further down the line, like because our version of the posh accent, like there's that. You know the way people talk on TV in, the, in like when in like the I Love Lucy days, the way people talked on TV. You know what I'm talking about? The Mid Atlantic, the Mid Atlantic, Lucy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so what's going on there? You know, it's like that that thing was was invented, 
And what American English is now is kind of like uh, an evolution of that, like a derivative of that. Like they were trying to create our version of posh, of a posh accent, like the most the most proper upper crust way of speaking. And it just kind of became TV voice because no one talks like that in real life. Um, yeah, this this uh, this is a core thing. So who fucking knows how accurate it is? But it's saying standard American accent or general American began to emerge in the 19th century with the creation of American dictionaries of English with recommended pronunciations. So these were based on the pronunciations of educated people living in a belt stretching from Western New England to the Great Lakes. Right. So, right. so that's kind of where it started. But then I guess like as radio becomes really big you would imagine that the accents that get that spread out and become more dominant are those from the regions where radio is coming out of, right? Oh. And then eventually movies and stuff from California would start to affect, and now I guess it's social media affects what people's accents sound like. Well, if I tell I, I Googled Father of American English, and you'll never guess whose, names popped up, whose name popped up. Who's that? Mr. Noah Webster, everybody. Oh. Yeah, Noah Webster of Webster's Dictionary fame. So, no, so this, so this is what I was remembering. No, he, uh, he said Webster believed that some common spellings were confusing and complex. He simplified the spelling of many words which helped children learn to read and write. Um, no, that's not what I was remembering. <laughs> He also fought for copyright laws, strong federal government, universal education, and the abolition of slavery. Well, my man Webster was cooking. They never, they never mentioned him in these regards. Uh, okay. I think that's our episode. It kind of ended on a whimper. I don't like that. We didn't have anything funny happen. Um, except George Santos. That's, but that's going to be funny forever. You know, like this dude is going to keep giving... Every, every week.